Hi everyone, Denise from Salvaged Inspirations and thanks for joining me today. Today I have a really fun tutorial for you. I'm taking a vintage hallway table, transforming it into something that was a little ratty tatty into something simply gorgeous using just one color of paint. I'm also sharing how to stain the top using that exact same color of paint. So just let me get set up and I'll be right back. I found this gorgeous vintage table on Kijiji. It was listed for $100 and I ended up picking it up for $80. Uh, it's very, very good condition. Uh, structurally, it was very sound. Uh, it was just a little bit grungy <laughs> on the finish, but overall a really, really gorgeous piece. The gentleman who I purchased it from, I guess he saw that the wood and the finish was rather dry, so he, he put some sort of oil all over it, I guess to make it look a little more rehydrated when um, the purchaser, myself, came to pick it up. Um, but I did have to give it a really good cleaning with white lightning. I do like cleaning all my furniture with a degreaser, whether it be a TSP or a TSP substitute, such as white lightning. And what I do is I just put a small amount in a spray bottle, fill the spray bottle with water, give it a spray, and then wipe it down with a sponge. I do have a designated area to clean and paint my furniture, so the sink is right there. So I can just keep rinsing the sponge and going over it. I also have a second bottle filled just with clear water to rinse everything off. The next step was sanding. Uh, unfortunately, I kind of did this out of order. I would have rather primed the bottom and then sanded the top, but for some reason, I thought I might be sanding the whole piece and leaving it raw wood on the bottom. It didn't end up turning out that way, but that's the joy of furniture makeovers. You just kind of go with it and it takes different directions as uh, it kind of takes on a life of its own. That's the artistic process here. Um, I used my DeWalt five inch orbital sander to sand the top of this. This DeWalt is a workhorse. I've had it for, oh, I don't even know how many years now, maybe seven, eight, years maybe more <laughs> and it cost i don't know anywhere it's between 50 60 dollars uh, i've noticed a lot of the furniture painters are using the festool sanders or the surf prep sanders and they are fabulous however they're costly they're between i don't know if you buy the kit i think it runs anywhere is between 300 and 600 dollars for for one of those so if you're just starting out really this 50 60 dollar dewalt orbital sander like i said is a workhorse you can buy different grit sandpapers for it if you are interested in no dust sanding uh, all I did was I bought a plastic adapter from Home Depot that was under $10 along with a little clamp. And you just clamp that onto the back of the sander which uh, will attach your shop back to it. So you can have no dust sanding as well. For this makeover, I started sanding the top with an 80 grit sandpaper. Then I switched over to 120 and then I switched over to a 220. After the top was sanded, I removed the drawer and then removed the original hardware. So I unscrewed the screw in the back and these often, these old pieces of hardware often have like a little pin nail holding in a portion of the hardware. So I just use my uh, screwdriver, the flat tip of it and pry that hardware off. Here I'm using my favorite shellac based primer. Uh, this is the stain blocker that I use on 99% of my pieces because it works. It is fabulous. Uh, I give it a mix because the shellac has a tendency to sink to the bottom. So I give it a good mixing. I use a Dixie cup to pour it onto a paper plate and this just makes for really, really easy cleanup. Usually three Dixie cups is appropriate for the paper plates that I use. And then to apply it, 
I use a foam roller brush and again this is because it makes it for very easy disposal. It's one time use and then I don't have to fuss with it. Now comes the fun part. I created a wash for the top of this table and I used sawmill gravy, Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint sawmill gravy and 50% water. So it was about a 50-50 mix. I just eyeballed it and that gave me a paint wash that I could apply to the top veneer of this table. And the reason why I wanted to do this is because it really lightens the wood up because when I um, had sanded it, the veneer wasn't perfect. There, there were still some imperfections to it. So the wash kind of covers that up and masks everything. All that's required to apply this wash is any sort of paintbrush. Uh, you need the wash, of course, which is the paint mixed with water and some sort of shop towel or lint-free cloth to wipe it off. I'm not being overly particular when I'm applying this wash. I'm just getting it on there. I also find that a spray mister bottle, which you'll, you'll see shortly, uh, also helps keep the wash moist and easy to wipe down. Um, but again, I'm just spreading it on. No particular way, I just wanna make sure that I get all this wet paint into the veneer grooves uh, make sure it's covered 100% uh, and get it on there and then I'm going to wipe it off with a shop towel. If I find that it dries up as I'm working with it, I just spray it with my water mister bottle to keep it nice and moist and again I just wipe it off. Once I've removed a good majority of the wash, then I'll start um, wiping it down with the grain. So you'll notice here I'm starting to wipe down with the grain back and forth and as I get closer and closer to my finished look I'll get more and more particular about the way I'm doing this. If I find it's getting dry again I'll just take the mister bottle and give it a nice little misting so it's easy to wipe back. I didn't feel that my first coat of wash was dark enough. I wanted it a little bit lighter, so I added a second coat of wash, repeating the exact same steps as I did on the first one. With the second coat, you can see it really lightens it up. And again, I just went ahead and wiped it off, and then the more I wipe down, the more in particular I get in, on the way I wipe it. A quick tip when creating a stain wash is if you see any shop towel like little marks in it or it's not looking like a soft finish, take a large soft brush and then just kind of feather it out. I love doing this because then it doesn't look like I've actually wiped it back with a shop towel. Once my primer dries, I like to go in with a 220 grit or even higher actually, but 220 works nicely with the sanding pad. And I go in and give it a really light overall sanding. Uh, this just makes it really smooth and preps it for the paint for a flawless finish. To paint the base of this table, I use Dixie Bell's chalk mineral paint in sawmill gravy. I've used this color before. It's a beautiful neutral beige. It's very versatile because it's, to me, I don't think it's overly warm and I don't think it's overly cool. I would say it's a real mid-tone neutral gray that gives kind of a light and airy feel. I've used it on a good few pieces now and um, it's, it's definitely one of my go-to beiges. I used a Dixie Bell Mini and uh, the only issue I ran into, and that's because I kind of did this piece out of order as I mentioned before, is I had to be extremely careful when I was painting around the lip of, uh, you know, the piece that I like I just did the top and the wash I didn't want to muck that up so I very very carefully painted around the lap but um, 
yeah, it's it took the paint very, very nicely. The legs were easy to paint. I used my slap it on technique. Uh, if you've seen one of my prior videos, I showed how to paint spindles. It looks a little odd slapping the paint on like this, but it really gives a beautiful smooth effect and uh, you don't end up with any brush marks. I'll actually link to that video at the end of this one. I gave the two coats of sawmill gravy a very, very light final sanding with a 400 grit sandpaper. And then it's time for top coat. And here I'm using Dixie Belle's clear coat in satin. As you can see, it's quite thick and it brushes on beautifully. Uh, however, I'm in the habit of spraying my top coats. So what I did was I diluted it with about 10% water. I gave it a really, really good mixing, and then I ran it through a paint strainer, just so there's, you know, nothing in there, like little dust or, or you know, maybe hard pieces that have dried on the side. I do not want that in my top coat. So once I run it through the strainer, then it's all ready to top coat, and it's just quite an easy process. I just uh, go back and forth overlapping. I want to make sure that I overlap my strokes and how I usually do it is I'll do the width and then I will do the length. So I will go both ways on my spray coat. On the second, you know, I might do the width on my first coat and I'll do the length on my second coat. You can sand in between top coats. Uh, depending on which brands I use, I do sometimes sand in between top coats. With the Dixie Belle Clear Coat, once it's thinned, I don't find it's really necessary, but I always take a look and see what it looks like on the furniture. To finish off this vintage hallway table makeover, I uh, put back on the original hardware. I staged it all up and here's the finished look. And I have to say, I just love it. I think it is beautiful. I really hope you found this tutorial helpful. If so, feel free to leave a comment down below. I always love to hear from you. If you have any questions, comments, further tips on the process, I would love to hear them. And also, if you haven't subscribed, be sure to hit that subscribe button. You can also find me on Pinterest, Facebook, Instagram, and as always on salvagedinspirations.com where I have over 400 furniture painting tutorials teaching you how to make your furniture beautiful. Until next time, I hope you have a lovely day, stay safe, and I'll see you again soon. Bye guys.